I told, I go, when I watch, I still remember watching that movie. It was uh, May of, no, it was like July of 2004. I was in Santa Fe, New Mexico. I was shooting the longest yard. And I was in my hotel room one night. I go, what do I feel like watching? He had just done training day. And uh, I said, let me watch this man. I didn't know what the fuck it was. When I watched Man on Fire, it was such a good goddamn movie that when it finished, I had to pay another 10 bucks to watch it again. That's how much I enjoyed that movie. But I remember after I watched it, it played with my mind. And I was like, if I would have a daughter, would I do something like that if something happened to her? And I didn't have to think about it. I was like, fuck yeah, I'll be shooting. Luke, Jimmy Florentine's son, said he saw a Rambo 2 the other night when fucking Sylvester Stallone shoots a Vietnamese dude with the exploding arrows. You know I'm going to get a couple of those to shoot some motherfuckers if something happens to my daughter. But she started crying at the end. You know, she understood that pain. I started crying at the end, too. I always cry when I watch Man on Fire. That's how I could tell she's my daughter. She started crying, and she was hot. My wife had a hugger and shit. But... <laughs> Afterward, no, she they bonded over Man on Fire because she didn't fucking like it. Like she, don't, my my daughter doesn't like that kind of stuff. But it's time for her to start watching, understanding. I'm not ready for her to show her like a fucking somebody get shot in the head twenty times. Like I don't want to, I don't want to show her the many saints of fucking Scarface when Tony gets shot at the end. But I gotta fucking uh, show her a few things. Let her know what the world is about even if it's just on film just to give her a little you know look a little taste of what the fuck is out there but it's so hard for me to comprehend that she's becoming a little fucking woman right in front of my eyes last week we went out somewhere and some kid got in trouble and the dad hit him you know and on the way home her and I were talking and she said to me dad you've never hit me you know and I don't know if you guys remember that subject was the night of uh, Ari's This Is Not Happening. Uh, I'll never forget her and I had a chat about that. This had She had to be like four or something. I was talking to my wife, and I was telling my wife, when Mercy was maybe four or three, I go, I got to be honest with you, I don't think I could hit it when she gets older. I'm not into that shit at all. I never really thought about it until I had a child. But I'm like, I don't think... I could hit her, you know, and I came from my house. My mother would fucking, you know, hit me with a broomstick at the drop of a fucking dime, like in a New York, New York minute. I was always concerned that, you know, because my house, the house I grew up with, my stepfather and my mom, my stepfather was a yeller. You know, his first response was to yell, so there was always a lot of yelling in the house. How come there's no hot water? I'd wake up in the morning and sit in that shower for an hour. By the time that motherfucker went in, there would be like six minutes of hot water, and then I would fucking hit the valve and freeze that motherfucker out. He would run out of the shower with little bunny rabbits. You know, like when people do bunny rabbits with the shampoo and they play around? One day he came out with bunny rabbits. He's like, what the fuck happened to the hot water? His eyes were closed. He had soap in his eyes and shit. So he was always yelling in the morning and I and you know uh there was no violence in my house except for my mom hitting me from time to time with either a bounty roll that was on fire a fucking a broomstick an ashtray she hit me with a purse a couple times and then it was straight up backhand stop my walk eyes you know the whole fucking thing uh and it was just a thought for me I'm like well you know I came from a house that was kind of ruckus and I came from a house where my fucking uh, mom would hit me. Maybe this will turn into that house. Not at all. You know, I like my mornings in my house. There's no yelling. There's no screaming. You know, I always knew what I wanted when I got older. I always fucking knew the things I wanted when I got older. Number one thing that, the number one thing in my world is I like a peaceful house. I got divorced in 1990, and the year, maybe 18 months prior to that divorce, that house sucked. The house I grew up in as a child, even though my mother was very sweet and the cooking was good and she loved me and stuff, 
that house sucked. That house sucked too. So when I got older, I had a blueprint already of what made a house not suck. Like when my mother died, I had to live with the Benders. Their house did not suck. They had love in the house. They spoke. You know, they watched TV. They giggled. And don't get me wrong. I had a lot of that in my house. Me and my mother used to laugh our asses off all the fucking time. But there was all that overall love because I didn't have a full family. I had a stepfather. That overall love was missing. There's a Pink Floyd song, one of my favorite songs called Dogs. And uh, at the end of Dogs, he goes into this fucking uh, Roger Waters goes into this sort of like rant, uh, you know, and one of the lines he says that has always struck a chord in my head is, you know, uh, being a stranger at home, you know, that those words are fucking, have always been very powerful to me, being a stranger in your home, I gotta be honest with you, you know, and then I felt like I was a stranger in my home. Like, I didn't belong there. I told you guys a story on how in the sixth grade when I got out of Catholic school, I didn't live in my house for like a year. I lived in other people's houses. I didn't like my house growing up. And uh, I was a stranger in that house. Even though my mom was loving and the whole fucking thing, I just felt that. So these are all the things when I hooked up with Terry. Like, when I hooked up with Kathy... And I got married the first time. Guys, I, I, I was so fucked. Listen, like I said a thousand times, you can't be a fucking junkie and have a household. You cannot be a fucking junkie and have a household, you know. I didn't even think of those things when I first got married. It wasn't until I got married to Terry that I asked myself, what did I want in my house? How do, how do I want my home to be? You know, number one, I don't like, one thing that stuck out with me I don't know how I felt about this. If I tell you how I felt about this, you're going to think I'm a little whiny bitch. But I have to bring this up. I didn't like going home from school and there wouldn't be anybody at home. I didn't think about it until years later. I liked it when I was doing it. When when you're fucking 12 and 13 and you go home and there's nobody home, you kind of fucking giggle and shit a little bit because there's nobody there to watch you. There's no supervision. In other words, you could do whatever the fuck you want. So I would come home and play Ted Nugent loud and my mother's record play in the living room. 